Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making Japanese style souffle jiggly fatty pancake. So if you haven't seen these pancakes, they're pretty small in diameter, maybe three or four inches, but they are thick. And we're going to be adding a lot of egg whites. That's what's going to give it its lift, very similar to the jiggly cheesecake in that sense because you've got this like nice and fluffiness here yeah. so there are a couple different variations on this pancake some people make them just right on the griddle and just flip them just as you would typical pancakes others use ring molds to get a taller kind of cleaner edge the style that i'm going to be attempting today is just the straight up kind of dollop on the griddle pancake because that's kind of how i like my pancakes and yeah i just want to give that little flip I want that satisfaction of the flip jiggle hopefully I will get it I think the key to this recipe will be to create a nice fluffy meringue and not to overwork it and that is the detriment of a meringue is if you overwork it you get to and we don't want that we want to so my recipe is adapted from a few that I found on the internet and I will put the links to the originals down in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The recipe amounts that I'm going to be using today are all in grams. I love grams. It makes things really, really simple in terms of converting things. You just weigh everything out, but of course you do need a scale, but these days you can get a pretty inexpensive digital scale pretty readily. I've got 150 grams of buttermilk. Now, if you don't have buttermilk, you could use whole milk and add a little bit of lemon juice to kind of sour it and curdle it. Buttermilk is basically a cultured kind of yogurty milk. It doesn't taste like butter or have any butter in, in it whatsoever. <laughs> and we're gonna add one egg yolk. Whisk that around a bit. That actually was a store-bought egg yolk because although my chickens are laying, the eggs are smaller than large. So most recipes call for large. 25 grams of melted butter. A teaspoon of vanilla. Then we're going to take our fencing mask and in it we're going to place 125 grams of flour, half teaspoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Now we're just going to sift this right on top of our egg and milk. We're also going to add a pinch of salt. Whisk this together. The acid from the buttermilk is reacting already with the base in the baking powder and baking soda. So this is already starting to leaven. We're gonna set that aside. And next we're going to beat our eggs. Here we have three egg whites that I have separated and we're gonna beat these up into stiff peaks and we're gonna add our 30 grams of sugar. And we're gonna do this in about three increments. We're gonna do a little initial whip up here until things get foamy and then start adding the sugar. Here we go, it's gonna be a little noisy. Almost forgot, I need to add one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. So cream of tartar is tartaric acid and it will help to stabilize the egg whites. If you don't have cream of tartar, you can substitute a little bit of lemon juice. Let's get back to this. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna add a third of my sugar. More sugar. I believe this is a French style meringue. There are three different types of meringue, French, Swiss, and Italian. I believe Swiss uses a syrup and then Italian uses some heat. I don't know. Let me know down below what you think this style of meringue is. Okay, let's keep mixing. We want a nice little peak off the beaters. We should lift it over our heads. Yep, I think that's done. Now we're going to introduce our meringue to our little egg mixture here. And we're gonna do this in three parts. This one, we don't have to be too careful, the first edition, because we're just trying to lighten up the flour mixture here. Another third. Now we're gonna be more gentle. Kind of just fold and flip. In a couple videos, I actually saw people using a whisk. Let me try that technique. Another technique that I saw in a couple other videos is that you use a whisk and you stir it and let the batter fall through the whisk as a gentle way to incorporate the egg whites without losing too much volume. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, so now that our batter's made, we're ready to cook these up. I've got myself my cast iron griddle here and I've got it heating on medium low, low. In a lot of the videos I saw people use a nonstick pan and I don't have one, so I'm gonna be using my griddle, but this is what I always use to make pancakes, so love this thing. So lightly oil that. I'm gonna use a little ice cream scoop. 
and place some pancake batter on there. It's already looking very cute. I want it to be round though, so let's coax it. And because we want these to be thick, we're gonna add an additional amount of batter on top. Extra scoop on there. Cover these for a few minutes to make sure they cook all the way through. So we're just like regular pancakes. When we start to see bubbles on the surface, then we know that we're ready to turn them. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna pile this on there. No, don't touch the other one. <gasps> don't touch. So kids, I think the lesson here is that this is not light enough. I might have to do this again. Okay, now we're ready to turn these. Oh my gosh. Burnt them. <sighs> these weren't the right pancakes anyways, so whatever. So while that cooks, staple. Boom. Goodbye. Look like ordinary pancakes to me. Let's try that again. We're gonna put this on low. So I'm using two foil rings here. Give them a little press to kind of keep them from leaking. Once again, we're gonna cover these. This is gonna take longer. I'm gonna let these cook for about 10 minutes. Again, once we start seeing those bubbles start to appear on the surface, then we know that we're ready to flip. Okay, be back in a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> okay, these are taking a very long time to cook. So in other videos, I also saw you could add a few drops of water, and then this is supposed to help kind of steam the pancakes a little bit. I just realized that I forgot to butter my foil, so this might be interesting. <laughs> oh man. So story time, pancakes. How do you like your pancakes? What do you like on your pancakes? I typically like silver dollar pancakes. I like the pancakes when they tend to be smaller. I don't really like the dinner size pancakes. It just is too overwhelming. It feels, it just feels like, here, have yourself a flapjack. Okay, let's check on these. Ooh, that one I think is ready to turn. All right. Ah, yes, did you hear that thump when it flipped over? That was funny. Okay, there's a lot of batter in there. We wanna give it enough time to cook up. All right, cover that. All right, it's looking pretty good. It's starting to separate from the sides, which is great, which gives me faith that I'll be able to remove the foil. Let's see how they look on the bottom. Good, looking good foil after all, so I'm just gonna rip it. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, it's working, it's working! Yes, okay, it actually came off without the butter. There it is! All right. Look, here's my fatty, fatty, fatty pancake, yeah! And it's not oozing, so I think it's cooked, oh yeah, oh yeah! Boom, boom, yay, look, and it even jerked. Alrighty, so here are my fluffy pancakes. I am so glad they turned out and that I didn't have to do this recipe again. But if you do make this recipe, make sure you whip up your meringue even more than I did. I think yours will be even fluffier than mine if you just, just whip them like crazy. There's cream of tartar in there, so that stabilizes things. I should have just beaten them till they were just like And then I think they would have been even fluffier. Although the little foil ring mold trick works really well because then from this, you get this. <laughs> so I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of pure maple syrup on top. Oh my word. Alrighty, I can't stand this any longer. Let's eat this thing. Okay. Oh 
Oh yes, look at that. It's like a mini slice of cake. Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Absolutely delicious. So one of the reasons why I chose this recipe was the inclusion of buttermilk. I love the flavor of buttermilk in pancakes. It adds a little tanginess to it and a bit of complexity, and you can absolutely taste it in this pancake recipe. This tastes very much like a buttermilk pancake recipe, but it has the textural kind of attributes of a cake. Fluffy, airy, you've got some crumb in there. And when I say cake, it's more like an angel food cake, more sponge-like, lighter, not dense or sweet. A little additional sweetness actually works really well because the pancakes themselves are just slightly sweetened. Scrumptious. Mm -hmm. This actually reminds me a bit of a very tall stack of pancakes. If you eat your pancakes in a very tall stack, it's kind of similar to that. Although this has a lighter texture, fluffier texture, not as dense and not at all rubbery. Scrumptious. The one drawback though is that it does take quite a while for these to cook. You want these to be fully cooked and hence because they're so thick it takes a very long time. I like my pancakes and waffles with strawberries and syrup. I just do, I do, I do, I do. One more bite. So, so good. Next year I hope to tap some maple trees and make my own maple syrup. I can't wait. I've never done that before. I have made maple candy or maple snow. Have you ever done that before? Super fun. You pour maple syrup in the snow and then you make candy out of it. Super fun. You haven't seen that video. Put it up there. All right, let's try my failure. Mm. That actually tastes pretty good. Much more like a typical pancake, a little bit fluffier, a little bit more cake-like and a little bit more toasted in flavor because I slightly burned it, but besides that, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so there you have it, Japanese style souffle fluffy pancakes. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any other recipes that you'd like me to test out or try. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow me on social media, and share this video with your friends, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye! So here are my fluffy fan fanfakes. Fanfakes?